So our story begins deep in the forest. Two large key beams are seen racing through the branches with force, destroying everything in their path until... With two seismic explosions, two big booms are seen in the forest as each key beam lands somewhere and detonates. Eventually though, we then see the culprit, and standing there with a smoking hand is none other than Ultra Ego Vegeta, who thinks to himself, <sighs> Managed to reach two miles without hitting a single branch. Not bad key control for an old man like me. A big grin then forms on the Divine Saiyan's face as he continues, <laughs> It's only a matter of time before I surpass that clown. Kakarot, keep on farming while I ascend to the next height for us Saiyans. Instantly, Vegeta then leaps off the ground, not yet finished, even slightly with his training, before yelling at the top of his voice with his arms stretched out wide above, <laughs> before shockingly the scene zooms out and above Vegeta is a humongous ball of pure Hikai energy, learned from his training with Beerus. Vegeta thinks to himself, <laughs> better not go too far. If I don't control my key just right, this whole planet will disappear. But with this kind of power, there will never be a time again where the Prince of All Saiyans will play second fiddle. Thinking in his head about all the times recently where Vegeta had to sit back and watch Goku in his Ultra Instinct form save him from all danger. Whether it be against Jiren in the Tournament of Power, or against the mighty Moro, who Vegeta could barely dent. With his rage and thoughts reaching its peak, <laughs> Vegeta frighteningly launches the massive ball of Hakai energy straight at the ground. From a distance, all we can see is what looks like a mini star land among the mountains briefly before instantly an explosion of almighty magnitude is seen erasing every and any trace of the mountain face. But as expected of the principal Saiyans, his blast in Hakai is near perfectly controlled, leaving the earth intact still, but most importantly, completely erasing the mountains it hit while leaving the surviving two mountains on either side without as much as a scratch and from the mass of dust and debris that rises up as a cloud, Vegeta emerges, somehow still disappointed with himself, thinking, hmm, not bad, but Beerus would have done better. True destruction shouldn't leave this much residue behind. All these smoke particles should be gone too with a perfect Hakai. Seems I have a long way to go still. Feeling a sense of dissatisfaction, Vegeta then looks at the ground, still thinking, I wonder, I wonder, will I ever get to be where I'm supposed to be? Not even since the days of serving under Frieza have I ever felt so insignificant. Damn you, Kakarot! You shouldn't be thinking like that, Vegeta-san. <gasps> But suddenly, from behind Vegeta, he hears a familiar voice, causing him to turn instantly around. And standing there with a cheerful face, Whis yells, Happy birthday, Vegeta-san! Many happy returns to you, and may your year be a joyous one! <laughs> Leaving Vegeta looking on awkwardly. You... you came here to disturb my training to say that?! Whis though is left confused, wondering why he wouldn't be happier on his birthday querying. What do you mean Vegeta-san? It is your birthday right? Bulma-san was telling me. The big 49. Only one off being 50. That's quite an age for a mortal. Are you sure you should still be training of your brittle bones? <laughs> Are you? Immediately, these naive comments from the angel infuriate Vegeta, who responds, I don't need reminding of my age! A scene doesn't show any change until at least 60, so I've got time for your information. 
Now if that's all you came here to say, be gone and leave me to be alone. But conveniently, Whis can't let this go and appears surrounding Vegeta on both sides somehow, popping up and saying, Oh, don't be like that, my dear prince. It's your birthday. You can't be alone. Why don't you come home to your loving family and have some delicious earth food and presents? What do you want? Cake? Sweets? Anything you want. I'm sure Bulma-san will provide you. Even the not-so-innocent things. <laughs> Whis, shut up! That last comment, of course, triggering Vegeta immediately. Continuing with a loud voice, I don't need any of that, especially the last part. If it truly is my birthday, then I'll do as I want. And right now, I need you to go and allow me to train. You are no longer my master, Beerus is. So go bother that Kakarot instead, will you? To which Whis just giggles and replies, <laughs> oh, Vegeta-san, you're so easy to wind up, aren't you? Well, actually, Goku-san is already over at Bulma's, eating up everything she has. In fact, if you don't go soon, it will probably all be gone. Eventually realizing, though, that Vegeta probably will not budge from his decision, Whis then gets an idea, saying, Hmm, no, no. You being alone your birthday will not do. I will not allow it. I have a better idea. I have some warriors you could go and see and train with who will do a lot more fighting back than this defenseless island. Are you up for it? <coughs> to which a now peaked interest Vegeta responds, Warriors, you say? If you're the one suggesting them, they must be quite something. Tell me more. To which Whis then begins describing the kind of warriors Vegeta probably didn't expect, saying, Why, of course. These two miscreants are causing havoc in hell right now as we speak. And you wouldn't believe this, but they're actually Saiyans too. One rather large one with a bold head and a terrible moustache, and another who quite frankly could be mistaken for your own brother. In fact, rumor has it, they know you very well, Vegeta. Old friends, you could say. Just the right people to spend your 49th birthday with. Am I right? Huh? You mean Napa and Raditz? After all these years! Suddenly, a wave of shock showers Vegeta, as memories from the past flood his mind. His old teammates, one of which he killed, he hadn't seen them in so long, but suddenly, a dastardly smile then appears on the prince's face. Something has clicked in his mind as he then responds, <laughs> Yes, no better way to spend a birthday than with old friends. Couldn't agree more. Take me to these fools now. I can't wait to show them just how strong their prince has become. <laughs> and so the scene then shifts to the other world, specifically the desolate plains of hell, where we can already see the signs of destruction by the smoke in the air. <laughs> Get back in your cells, why won't you? As we then suddenly see Mez being struck from behind by a beam while he yells in pain. <laughs> that got him good, didn't it, Nappa? as it soon revealed that the attack came from none other than Raditz, the brother of Goku, while Nappa stands close behind, both sinisterly smirking as they break the rules of the other world. Raditz continues, <laughs> Just how long do you think we can keep this up before they finally get some nerd to stop us? Maybe it'll be that PyCon guy again. To which Nappa with a smirk replies, <laughs> The green man? It's always weird when that guy arrives. Always reminds me of that one guy from where Kakarot lives. Ha! Never mind though. Look who they sent instead. <gasps> Stay back! And standing there is a terrified Goz, trembling in fear as one of the Bruce Saiyans rushes towards him to cause him even more pain. 
<laughs> Come here, you freak! You're gonna let me onto Snakeway right now! But just as Nappa rushes in towards Goz, a sudden instant transmission occurs in front of him. Huh? What's this now? And standing there, of course, is our hero Vegeta, with Whis behind him, and with Goz crying in happiness at his arrival. The stone cold faced Vegeta just stares at his former comrade and says, hm. So I see you haven't changed a bit, Nappa. Still as ugly as the day I destroyed you. What? Vegeta? <gasps> the. the prince? What's Vegeta doing here? Did he finally die? Both Saiyans being filled with a mixture of shock and anger at the sight of their former leader. <laughs> nice to see you again, Raditz. Please tell me you're not as weak as when I last saw you. What a disappointment you ended up being compared to your brother. You should be far stronger than that bonehead Nappa by now. Why are you? But Nappa, who suddenly has the memories flood back of his last encounter with Vegeta, how his own prince, who he helped raise from childhood, destroyed him without mercy, he suddenly becomes enraged, grumbling, Vegeta, you damn coward! If you're going to say something, say it to my face, you traitor! You've got some nerve waltzing in here! A crazed smile then soon appears on Nappa's face though, as he clenches his fist and realizes now, while he least expects it, might be the perfect time to finally get his revenge. Continuing, <laughs> You damn royal fool! You have no idea the kind of training me and Raditz have gone through all these years. Your puny power level is nothing to me now! <laughs> oh, I'm going to enjoy this! <laughs> I'm going to enjoy ripping you limb from limb, boy! Feel the wrath of Nappa! Yeah! But with a loud but unmoving thud, Nappa's punch lands on the face of a smiling Vegeta, not even flinching the prince, let alone injuring him, as Vegeta laughs. <laughs> the power of who? I'm still waiting to see it. <laughs> what? What is this? Vegeta? Your hair! No! No! As soon, in complete shock, Nappa begins to tremble, realizing that this Vegeta is not the same as the one who left him. This is an entirely new Vegeta. A Super Saiyan Vegeta! As Vegeta, at the moment of impact, transformed instantly into the legendary form. Not out of necessity, but just seemingly to show off, as Vegeta says quietly, What's the matter? Never seen a Super Saiyan before? What? Vegeta! Simultaneously shocking Raditz, who continues, You... you became a Super Saiyan? You... were the Saiyan of legend! Both Nappa and Raditz are forced back in confusion and fear. They can't believe his words just yet, but even without scouters, they can sense the immense pressure coming from Vegeta's power. Vegeta then with a partially satisfied smile, then reaffirms their doubts, saying, <laughs> Yes, Raditz, as if it wasn't always destined. I am indeed the legendary Saiyan that comes every 1,000 years. The only of my kind. A Super Saiyan. And this isn't even the start of how far I've gone. Meaning <laughs> then transforming into his Super Saiyan 2 form rapidly after, saying with a smirk, Ha! And this is a level beyond even a Super Saiyan. We call it a Super Saiyan 2. What? Super Saiyan 2? Impossible! Vegeta! He wasn't lying, was he? What is that electricity? 
Meanwhile, though, a thoroughly pleased Vegeta closes his eyes, smiling, and thinks, <laughs> What a glorious birthday present this really was. Seeing these two marvel before my eyes is like a fever dream. Just wait till they see my real power. <laughs> Following this, not wasting any time, Vegeta ascends once again. As Vegeta says, And behold! A form that leaves the Super Saiyan form looking like a meaningless party trick. This is a Super Saiyan God. The first and only in the multiverse. <laughs> God? Vegeta! I... I can't believe what I'm seeing. How did Vegeta become so... so strong? Vegeta, meanwhile though, who doesn't want any of the shock factor to let up, looks both in the eye dead on and informs them, Don't get too comfy now. This ride has only just started. This is the weakest of the god forms available to me. I still have three left, you clowns. What? Three more? You must be bluffing. Three more? Was... Was Vegeta the one who killed Freezer in the end? <laughs> Suddenly, they're transforming into his Super Saiyan Blue form, telling the two, now beginning to sweat Saiyans. And this? is a Super Saiyan version of a Super Saiyan God. I guess you can call it Super Saiyan Blue. Leaving both to mutter, but Blue? <laughs> yes, boys, Blue. But there's another stage to this. A limit breaker version, if you will. Think of it like a Royal Blue. Hard, Vegeta yells tremendously, almost deafening the two Saiyans as pure energy bursts forth from his body. What power! What are my eyes seeing right now? As now even just the power of Vegeta itself is blowing huge amounts of smoke and debris right at Nappa and Radis who watch on like sitting ducks. And now, at the end of it, levitating off the ground with a majestic aura, Super Saiyan Evolution Blue Vegeta now appears, his grin wide as he says, <laughs> Sorry about the theatrics, but what you see before you is my own unique form, one fit only for royalty. You may call it Evolution Blue. But... I told you three, and this final form of mine is one that will leave you petrified. Learn from the God of Destruction, Beerus, himself. Behold! As Vegeta begins powering up, his entire face itself beginning to bulge with vascular veins, while the two Saiyans remain eerily quiet, now profusely sweating as if in a sauna. <laughs> Of Ultra Ego! Immediately metamorphing into his new Hakaishin training form, losing his eyebrows and now surrounding himself with a mysterious dark colored flame. With a crazy look on his face, Vegeta utters finally, <laughs> You see? This is the power of your prince, the power of destruction. Gained from training under a Hakaishin. The power you weaklings could have achieved if you weren't so pathetic. <laughs> so tell me, what do you think? <laughs> of course, at this point, the two poor Saiyans have seen enough to last a lifetime. And with their voices nearly lost, they remain speechless until... Minus. The two suddenly get down to one knee, bowing down seemingly before the prince, who at first reacts confused. <gasps> A bizarre reaction, I have to say. 
but a cocky smile eventually reaches Vegeta's face as he continues. <laughs> I guess that the face of true power, bowing before it, would be your first reaction. I like it. But stand up! I came here to do more than show you my power. But as Vegeta monologues to the duo, an arm grabs his shoulder. <laughs> leading Vegeta to question aggressively, Who dares touch me in this hellhole? Who dares? I do, son. <laughs> and standing there, looking down regally, is none other than King Vegeta, the prince's father. But that was it for today's video guys, and if you made it this far, leave me a hashtag King in the comments down below. And let me know what you think King Vegeta would say to his now all-powerful son. But also, if you really want to fund another chapter to this story specifically, just head over to my Patreon, where for just $3, you can support this manga and get a ton of manga goodies sent to your address in return too. But if you just want to watch more of my content, just click on one of these two videos on the right. Until next video guys, cheers.